Welcome back to FHN, guys. We are out in the bait lab, and we have John Beath here with us, and we are talking halibut gear. And, John, I've been halibut fishing a few times, really enjoyed it, but what I'm seeing here on the table is way more intense than we were doing. What do you, I mean, start us off with your favorite rig here and kind of work from the swivel down to the hook and show us what you're doing. All right, disclaimer, though. You can go out with the most basic stuff and catch halibut. The difference here is we are trying to appeal to all of the senses of the halibut. Right. You know, the sound, the vibration, you know, their eyeballs, their scent, their ability to smell. We're trying to do everything. Right. But there was a question on Facebook, what should I use, circle hook or J hook? Right. J hook, right? Good old J hook. If you want to jig, J hook. If yeah. you want to jerk, J hook. You know, a lot of people like river fishing and they just can't, can't help themselves. If you're a jerk or a jerk fisherman, <laughs> J-hook. Right. If you're going to fish deep, a circle hook. Now these were invented by the Japanese. And when they brought these over to the long line fishermen of the US, uh, the halibut fishery in particular, right. the catch rate went up by 50%. Wow. Because the way a circle hook works Halibut comes up, gets it in here. If you jerk, nothing happens. Right. See that? Nothing happens. But when he gets it in his mouth, if you let him eat it and go to swim away, now look what happens. I've got it. Right. And we have to use barbless hooks. So with a barbless hook, a circle hook is a good idea because yeah. you're probably not gonna lose them. Right. So if you're gonna fish in real deep water or you get lazy and I get lazy because it's a lot of work, I stick the rod in the rod holder, and I, I just sometimes wait for a bite. Right. That's not as effective. If you can work it, you're going to always catch more fish. Okay. But, you know, you get tired. Yeah. And sometimes when the bite's slow, okay, I'm going to take a rest. Which brings up another point. A lot of people have their gear, and they drop their lead to the bottom, and that's where they fish. Right. That's not what you should be doing. Okay. You should bring it up four to six feet, because now you have impacted more water, and if there's some underwater obstacle or something, now you have halibut that can see it from a greater distance. But right. the other benefit is, if you imagine your lure right here, four to six feet above the bottom, that halibut comes up, He's leaving the safety of the bottom. He grabs that. What do you think he wants to do? Go you right think back. he wants to just mouth it? He grabs it and he wants to go right back down. Right. So you get better hookups right. Right. and more fish to the boat. Right. So get it up off the bottom, but every two or three minutes, if you're holding the rod, bang the bottom, banging the bottom. So let's talk about that. Halibut and salmon and all fish have a lateral line. That lateral line has tens of thousands of little sensors. They're little yep. nerve endings. It enables fish to feel without touching. That's right. how bait fish move around, right. schools of salmon. Right. They can sense the electric current in the water put out by vibration from other animals, basically. Is. It's, it's not an electric current, but it is, it's, it's that vibration. Right. Sound travels 11 times right. farther underwater, and it's five times louder. Whales can communicate by, you know, a factor of 2,000 miles. Wow. So one can talk to the other one 2,000 miles away because of sound and the vibration and how it works. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to bang that bottom. We're trying to do everything that we can to attract halibut. And we already talked about attracting them from a right. mile away. So we're using the scent. We're using the sound. Right. And now we're doing lights. This is an underwater ultraviolet light that takes a double A battery. So you put that in, screw it down real tight, and you can fish this down to a thousand feet. We okay. also have water activated lights, cool. and we have these other little tail lights. Adding a light for halibut is huge because now we are making our glows glow better with a light right. source down there. We're putting a spotlight, especially with this one. I've got underwater footage where it's swinging around and literally spotlighting the herring that I have. The halibut right. love it. Right, and, and when you're fishing this depth of water, say four or 500 foot No, deep, even 100 feet. It's sometimes. completely black down there for the most part. Right, however, halibut and other fish see differently than we see. Okay. They can see into the ultraviolet spectrum. Ultraviolet is that thing that gives us skin cancer. If you've got blue eyes, which I know that you do, you right. should be wearing sunglasses every time out on the boat because you're more susceptible to eye damage because you have okay. blue eyes. Did you know that? Oh, that explains yeah. why I'm blind, though. 
No, but <laughs> when you're out in the boat you, or on the river, you really need to have sunglasses. Wow. That UV is that powerful, and in the summer wow. months, and we're coming into those months, the UV index rises. The UV will penetrate the water if there is no plankton bloom or no mud in the water down to 500 feet. It gets, okay. it gets dim, but in the, the depths that we typically fish for halibut and fish for salmon, there's a UV index there, and that's why these lures really shine. So to give you an example, if we can switch to the overhead, you know, here's the UV light that I have. And this is all we're doing. When you put these lures in the water on a day with a, with a lot of UV, you notice, wow, it got brighter. Right. And that's what's going on. All we're simply doing is trying to have lures that can be seen from a greater distance because it's going to excite the fish. Right. In nature, squid do something called bioluminescence. Yep. And you know, here they are, and if you look it up online, they'll turn colors, mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to duplicate. And that's why in my fat squids, this is a seven and a half, I have a little a little hole here for a light stick. So okay. we stick a light stick. So just a glow stick. A glow be. stick, and then it glow makes it glow from the inside out. Well. So we're just you're artif making, artificially yeah, making right. it bioluminesce because right. scientists have studied repeatedly how fish react to squid that bioluminesce. And what they've right. discovered is, and it's no secret, and it's no mystery, it gets fish excited. Right. So you add that and good bait on your hook, and I always put some bait on my hook, unless it's you know, a, a Point Wilson dart, I'm not gonna bait that, but right. any other jig or something like right. this, I'm gonna put a hunk of bait on there because I want that scent. You want the scent. I want that scent. But let's go through a couple of items here. Yeah, let's do it. So here's a spreader bar, and a lot of people are familiar with a spreader bar. The thing I've done different here is I've taken an old, spoon and I put it on there. Without this, you know, it doesn't make much noise. But now, right, right. now think of what that does. Right. And this is just an old, this is it's an old, old salmon spoon. Yeah. Maybe you're not using it much yeah. anymore. It's a lure gents number four. Up. Right. You can use this one. Right. And by the way, you know, this, this has some good UV properties and it's super bright. And I've got a light shining here, but this really works. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I used to run Rivers Inlet Resort in Canada, and once a week we didn't have any planes. And I would go out to the ocean. So for one whole summer, once a week, I would go out there with four rods. You can use as many rods as you want. Okay. And I had everything identical. The only difference was I put a noisemaker on one. At the end of the season, the one with the noisemaker caught five fish to one. Wow. You know, right. so that's enough study. There. Noise, right. noise. Right. I like noise. Right. One thing I noticed on this rig up here, and you showed me kind of as we were going over this stuff, you've actually put. I mean, I'm going to call it a hoochie for lack of a better term, but you've actually put it on upside down. What's no, I put it on the correct way. Right. <laughs> right. Years ago, Chris Batten and I, he wrote How to Catch Trophy Halibut. Okay. He and I did a project over a four-year period. We spent about thirty grand. I hope my wife's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We, we had this incredible project of, of uh, beating Charlie White to, you know, getting the halibut biting the lure. And we okay. did. Charlie was a friend. I did a video with him years ago. But we recorded a 125-pound halibut in 325 feet of water wow. biting the lure. And we spent literally hundreds of hours watching. And what I saw with these, these skirts this way they didn't get as much action. Right. Right? But when I turned them upside down, it became more lifelike. Yeah. And as that current surged, it became a dynamic bait versus a static bait. And it also, you know, just lays right over the hook. It doesn't get in the way. Right. So this is more lifelike. It's more what you see in nature. Right. And with this rig here, I've got a big old swivel onto that swivel, onto that uh, circle hook. Right. So when I hook the fish, he's not gonna tangle up my leader. Right. And it just works a whole lot yeah, better. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine that below the amount of movement that's gonna come from that compared to the other way. And oh yeah, and we've got, we've got some underwater footage, um, if David can get that up, because it just looks so good. Right. And the fish love it. And by the way, pink is a great color for halibut. Awesome. A lot of guys said, I don't wanna fish pink. But once their wife started using it and out fishing them, <laughs> suddenly they're buying pink. This is one of my top colors. But we try to have 
UV or glow in the dark in all of our stuff. So those are, those are some of the things that we do. We also will have a scent tube and this is in my Octo Squid Leader. Okay. And in that scent tube, we can put a light stick and then it's lighting it from the inside out. We put a little bit of a, a uh, sponge or something like okay. that and stick it in there, and put our favorite your, scent and it's okay. dripping over there creating a good scent Is there a, a scent, scent that you prefer over? Any scent is gonna work. Okay. You know, okay. any scent is gonna work. Okay, so we've kind of covered the gear. Let's talk about the rod and the reel. The rod, well, I'm, I'm biased because I'm the manufacturer. This is my Sensi stick, uh, Sensi Flex, and it's a six foot, 30 to 100. It'll handle a 32 ounce lead. Okay. And now I feature them with Alps Guides. Awesome. Alps Guides are the best guides, and that is uh, basically a rain shadow product. Right. They, you know, it's the manufacturer is in Squim, and my buddy Bill Batson, um, he got me into Alps Guides, and they're just phenomenal. They're marine grade stainless awesome. steel, but this rod blank is really pretty awesome. Hold on right. to that. Right. It's sensitive enough on the tip. Go ahead and lift up. Yeah. Yeah. Fish on. And by the way, I should mention when you have a fish on a circle hook, start counting. Let him let him right. bend that rod down. Count right. to five, and then slowly start reeling because that engages the right. Rod. Exactly. As far you as do not want a jerk or circle hook. No jerk circle hook like we said before. So as far as reels, you can use whatever you have, or if you're really into it, you can go into a two-speed reel. Okay. And Penn's got some good two speeds. Okuma has some good ones. And as you go up in price, of course, the quality is a lot better. This is an Avid um, on my. My guide boat, I'm using Accurates. Accurates okay. are amazing, but it just costs a little bit more. But the difference is, you can put this in two speed and it's easier for a kid, your wife, or you, me. And right. It's awesome. I had Cabela's grandkids on my boat for a week. Oh, cool. I had a five-year-old catch his halibut every single day of that seven days, and he did it all by himself. Wow. He left it in the rod holder. But that enables kids to be able to do this Absolutely. without their parent you know, telling them, I'll help you. Right. They can do it themselves, right. which is really going to be helpful. Well, I think that about covers the halibut stuff, but you guys oh. have... A new product coming out, you're super excited about, we're super excited about. Tell us a little bit about these. Well, this is my Easy Spoon, and I've been testing these. They don't have the hooks and the swivels, but they are going to come. Right, all sorts of different colors. Yeah, they're gonna come with a split ring on both ends, and they're going to have a swivel on both ends. But look how bright these are. Right. And these are all UV, and on the back, they are glow-in-the-dark. So every one of them glows, and every one of them has the UV, and they are stainless steel. These are really, really cool, and I've already got pre-orders. I had to increase my, my order because they are, they're so hot, the stores want right. them. They're, right. they're so how amazing. long are those, how far away from market are May. those? May. Before, awesome. before our summer Chinook fishery, awesome. we will have these. And then next year I'm going to have another size. But notice awesome. I've got, got a few extra eyes on there. So right. it's pretty cool. And they go through the water incredibly well. Wow. And the fish love well, them. Well, we look forward to seeing those in the marketplace. And we look forward to fishing those because I know we're going to get a couple of them. I know we're I gonna might have to. But, but they don't have hooks. so Right. Well, we can get some hooks on it. For sure. <laughs> We're but pretty anyway. ingenuitive around here. Yeah. But. And uh, here's something else. The log book. Okay. Write down everything that you can because there's going to be some areas that fish really well on an incoming versus an outgoing. Yeah. And by the way, you know, it's, it's important to make note right. of these things. Right. So this log book has 50 data points. At the end of a season, you can go through your data points and say, wow, I didn't realize I do better when I use trout or mackerel right, or I right. didn't realize that I did better an hour after high tide or right. during this current or whatever it is. And I can speak truth to that because when I was younger, teenager, early 20s, I kept log books on all my sturgeon fishing and we could literally go to the spot where we fished one year from the point we caught and fished the year before and catch fish just like we did that day. It was Write it down. This Write is available down. at squidlures.com. I put this together. Here, you awesome. can have that one. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for the Bait Lab. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and we're going to be back right after these messages.